particular exercise one that we have been talking about uh, yesterday and day before yesterday. Essentially, we have said that we want to ensure living with continuous happiness, and for that, you know, we have to understand everything that concerns our being, our living, and what concerns our living is the whole existence, right? And therefore, I have to, you know, understand this self, the world of consciousness, I have to understand the world of material, and I have to understand this coexistence, the space. And this is what we are trying to do through exercise one and two and three. In exercise one, we are trying to observe the self by the self. Exercise two, we are trying to observe the material, for example, the body by the self. And in exercise three, we will observe the coexistence, the space by the self. And then we said that presently we will work with step exercise one, that is seeing the self by the self. And when we are seeing the self by the self, right, we said that we are looking at the self and particularly looking at the imagination which is going on in the self, right? And we can observe this imagination going on in the self directly without involving the eyes, without involving the body. And therefore, I can give rest to the body, I can give rest to the eyes. So I can keep this eyes and the body in a comfortable position. Any position, any posture, it is comfortable. I'll keep this, you know, eyes and the body in that comfortable position. Because I'm not needing this, you know, involvement of this eyes and the body while I'm observing myself by the self. When I'm observing my imagination myself, I don't have to involve these things, so I can give rest to them. With that, we said that we will do this exercise in seven steps. And we had started with step one. And we said that the step one is very simple, but very important. Right. So let me, you know, place few points you know, uh, about this step one before I move to this step two. So step one, what we are doing is, we are just being aware. So this step one is self-observation, self-awareness. So I am observing myself, right? And how am I observing myself? I am observing myself by observing my imagination that is going on in me at this moment of time. That is observing my desire, my thought, my expectation, all this put together is what we are calling as imagination. And this imagination is going on in me, right? And I am not aware of it because I have not been paying attention to it. Now all that I have to do is to take this decision that I have to pay attention to it and I have to observe it. So if I take this decision, right, and I start observing it, I am able to see what is going on. I am able to observe my imagination. I am able to observe my feeling, my thought right, that is there in myself at this moment of time. So very simple in the sense that I want to observe things, I want to understand things, that is my need. And I have the capacity to see things, observe things. So the need is there, the potential is there, capacity is there. I only have to take the decision. So if I take the decision to observe something, I am able to observe it. If I take the decision to observe myself, my imagination, I am able to observe it. Because the capacity is there and of course the need is there. Each one of us want to understand, want to understand ourselves, want to understand others, ultimately want to understand the whole existence. So that need is there, the potential is there. I just have to take the decision that yes, now I will observe. So very simple to do, right? 
you don't have to create any capacity. The capacity is there, the potential is there, and the need is also there. You just have to realize this need and take this decision that yes, I will now observe myself. I will observe my imagination. So it is very simple in that sense. But when you start working on it, you find that it is very difficult. Right? Very difficult. Why very difficult? Because of <coughs> many things. I will mention two of them. Number one, when you start observing yourself, you find that your attention keeps drifting away, going away to some other things. So you are trying to observe the self, the imagination of the self, and your attention goes to some pain in the body. Your attention goes to your appointment that you had given to someone. Your attention goes to somebody shouted at you. Right? Now this is the problem. And this is a very strong problem. That you have decided to observe yourself, your imagination. But your attention is going to all places except yourself, your imagination. Now what is, why, why is that happening? So if you try to understand. Right. <coughs> If you observe this, you can observe the, I mean, this slide I have displayed, just describing this, you know. So, uh, what is happening is that till now you have been paying, thinking that things outside are important. So, your house is important, your money is important, your food is important, your body is important, the sensation of the body is important, somebody giving respect to you or not giving respect to you is important. All these are important and therefore you have been paying attention to them. That has become your habit. You hardly thought that you are also important. Therefore, your attention is not going to yourself. This is the problem. Okay. Now, what to do? What to do is very simple. If you can see that you are also important. Yourself is also important. Your imagination is important, also important. Then your attention will keep coming back to yourself, to your imagination. So, as simple as that. So, you take this decision that I am important, my imagination is important, therefore I will pay attention to it, I will observe it. And in the meantime, if your attention goes somewhere else, right, don't react to it. Just observe that your attention has gone to somewhere else and that is because you consider that important. So your attention goes to your sensation because you consider that the sensation is important. Right? And at this moment of time you consider that sensation is more important than yourself, your imagination. Right? Similarly, if your attention goes to your appointment which you have given to someone, right, then just observe this, don't react. No. You can see that yes, you have given some, you know, more importance to that appointment than yourself. So it has gone there, that is fine. But at this point of time, I want to pay attention to myself. So just make this decision and your attention will come back to yourself, to your imagination. So this is one major problem that we face when we are start, when we work with step one. So the solution is very simple. If my attention goes somewhere else, it is fine. I observe where it has gone and I come back. I decide to come back to myself it, without any reaction. I mean, it is not very easy to do, you know, in the beginning because your habits are so you know, hard. But that is fine. If you don't react to it, it is very easy. You just have to see that it has gone somewhere else and you have to keep with your decision that I have to observe myself because I am also important. So the attention will automatically come back. 
So if it does not come back for two minutes, five minutes, that is fine. Don't react. Just keep observing that it has gone somewhere else and keep to your decision that I have to observe myself. So this is one thing. Second thing is that whenever you start observing, right? You start observing through the body, through the eyes. And this creates so many problems. You know, I'm not going to describe the details here. Uh, I would let you go through the process and then yourself realize that how you start, you know, seeing things, your imagination through your eyes. That is your habit because you think that things can be seen through eyes. So when you are looking at your imagination, you start focusing your eyes on your imagination. And this creates a lot of problems, you know, your headache and all these things. Uh, pain in the eyes. But that you experience yourself and then I think you will understand better. But I'm just one, you know, putting this as a note that if you have, you know, pain in the, your brain, in your eyes, then you can ask back you know, that this is what is happening and you know, what can be done about it. Uh, the main issue is that I don't have to involve my eyes to see my imagination. I can directly see it. So there is no question of focusing your eyes you know, somewhere you know, where you think the imagination is there. It, and when you are trying to you know, observe or focus your eyes, you are certainly giving a lot of instruction to the brain. Right? And there is a lot of agitation in the brain. So even you don't have to involve your brain. But fine, go ahead. You, know, you will see, you will feel all these things yourself. And then when you ask this question, it will be a more real life question for you. And I can respond to it. The second, third problem is that when you are looking at your imagination, right, this feeling, the thought, these are not clearly visible to you. Most of the time what you are able to see is some thought which is very agitated. Very agitated thoughts and even those thoughts when they become peaceful, you are not able to see them. Right. And many of you would feel that you are not able to see the feeling behind the thought, you know, the desire behind the thought. So that is fine, you know. <clears throat> what we can do is we start with observing the thought and as a post reflection, we can look back at the feeling that was there, you know, supporting this thought. This we can do for some time. We should not continue with this, that every time we look at the thought and then conclude for the feeling. But to get an idea that yes, there is a thought and there is certainly a feeling at the base of that thought, you can do this analysis of the thought and conclude about the feeling. But slowly you will see that you will be able to observe the feeling that is there behind the thought. And that is important because ultimately, you know, the other steps that we are going to work on has to do mainly with the feeling. So I should be able to observe the feeling and it is possible. So when you start observing the imagination, you are able to see some thoughts which are very, you know, uh, gross, very disturbing, very, you know, uh, agitated. If you continue to observe after some time, this, uh, these thoughts will become more peaceful, you know, more harmonious. Then if you continue, you'll be able to see the thought and you'll be also able to see the feeling behind it, the desire behind it. Right? So that is how it will go. So you may for the time being look at those agitated thoughts and reflect on it to you know, conclude about the feeling behind. But then slowly you will be able to see the feeling directly. So there are many such issues involved, right, regarding the step one. <clears throat> uh, 
similarly this feeling you know that you know my imagination has stopped okay, it is not going on then what do i do what do i see right. my response is that it is fine if you are not able to see at this moment keep observing because it might have happened that your imagination is now not full of contradiction not agitated it is peaceful it is harmonious therefore it has become subtle and you are not used to see subtle things subtlety at that level and therefore you are not able to observe so if you just keep with your decision to observe and start observing it or continue observing it slowly your subtleness of observation will also develop and you will be able to see it see that imagination which is going on see the feeling that is there at the back that will become possible so <coughs> the solution to this is to keep working with your decision to observe the imagination the feeling the thought without reacting without getting disturbed by the fact that you are not able to see it at this moment right <clears throat> so like this there are many such uh, issues which will keep coming and i would respond to them as you come up with the question <clears throat> with that now i will just go with go to step 2 for you to you know kind of uh, start working on it till tomorrow morning in step 2 once i am able to observe the imagination observe the feeling observe the desire which is there at the base of the thought that is going on in me now i can evaluate the feeling the thought that i have at this moment right so suppose i have a feeling of affection for someone or i have a feeling of opposition for someone now this process of getting angry at someone you can see at the base of this getting angry or having anger for on someone at the base of it there has to be a feeling of opposition otherwise you can't you know have this thought of anger right so there is a feeling of opposition then you are trying to work out how to express that feeling of opposition that is thought right so anger is one such thought which is you know an expression of the feeling of <coughs> opposition so now when i am able to see this feeling i am able to see this thought i am asking myself is this feeling naturally acceptable to me or not naturally acceptable to me so you can ask yourself whether this feeling of opposition is naturally acceptable to you or not naturally acceptable to you if you have feeling of affection you can ask yourself whether this feeling of affection is naturally acceptable to you or not naturally acceptable to you right so this is one question that you can ask the second question which is almost related to this is ask yourself whether this feeling is in line with human nature or is it not in line with human nature so as a human being will it be you know a part of your nature or it will not be a part of your nature is it innate to you is it not innate to you is it your natural characteristic is it not your natural characteristic as a human being and the third question which is very simple to ask but very important is do i want the continuity of this feeling so this example i have here taken the feeling of opposition and feeling of opposition you know of affection would you like to have the continuity of feeling of opposition or you would not like to have the continuity similarly do you want to have the continuity of feeling of relationship feeling of affection or you do not want the continuity of this feeling of affection this is a very simple question to ask but very important question to ask 
So you might have a feeling of opposition for someone and you might be thinking of how to take revenge, take revenge from him. But if you look at this yourself, right, that you have this feeling of opposition for certain reason, but do you want to continue with this feeling? So if you ask yourself, you would see that you would not like to continue, but you are giving justification for its continuity because you would say that, look, this man behaved with me in this manner. And if I don't react to him, he will continue to behave like that. Now, this is a justification. This is a justification which we are giving. But if we ask ourselves directly, is this feeling something which I want to continue with? Or this feeling is there because of certain circumstances to which I am reacting. And I would certainly not like the continuity of it. So these two, first one and the third one, are very simple to verify. Ask yourself whether it is naturally acceptable to it, you or not. And the third one, ask whether you want the continuity of this feeling or you do not want the continuity. So this evaluation we have to do in step two. But I would certainly alarm saying that it is better to work with step one with precision for a long time before we go to step two where we, where we start evaluating the feeling. This is because the moment we evaluate, we are likely to react. So this was quite clear with one of the participant who said that, you know, uh, I looked at myself yesterday and then I felt very depressed because everything going on in me is all bad. Now this reaction has come because she has started evaluating her thoughts, her feelings, and she has found that they are not good. Right? They are something which are not naturally acceptable, things which she doesn't want to have the continuity of it, you know, but they are there. Now this evaluation she has done and she has now started reacting to it and that is how she has gone into a depression. Right? If I was just aware and not evaluated, the chances of reacting was relatively less. But fine, if we think, if we are confident that yes, now I am able to observe and I will not react, then next step we can go to and that is evaluating that feeling evaluating that thought, right? whether it is naturally acceptable to me or not, whether I want the continuity of it or not. So this is what we will work on till tomorrow morning. Right? We have 24 hours to work on. So we'll work on step